Hello, this is LJ Poffo, and this is a Microsoft Excel video in Windows um, to show a few text-oriented functions. Now, Excel is able to do all sorts of formulas. The most common people think of is your standard calculations of numbers. This plus this equals that, or this string, uh, or this range of cells should be added together for a sum, or multiplied against a tax rate, things like that. You can also use references to different cells in a formula in order to look up information. What we're going to do here is look at text. Text can't be calculated in the way that numbers can. You can't add Shane plus Morgan and come up with a new name that, you know, like, like, like that. But you can do things with text in order to clean it up. One of the great things about Excel is its ability for you to take bunches of data in the tabular format and clean it up so that it's easier to analyze. So in this particular case, I'm just going to show you a little bit. I'm not going to do this whole exercise, but it should give you a handle on what you um, can do. So right now we've got a customer's first name and last name in all capital letters. And I don't want to see them in all capital letters. I want it to look like Shane Morgan. Well, imagine that you have a table that's got hundreds of rows like this, and you certainly don't want to sit there and type them manually. So how can we do this? We're going to use a function called proper. So I'm going to click into the cell, and I'm instead of typing equals and then trying to type it out, what I want to do is use the function manager. So up by the formula bar, I'm going to click on this little uh, symbol that it will insert a function by pulling up the panel to let me, let me search for the function that I want first. I happen to know that I want proper, which simply means a combination of upper and lowercase letters. There is also a, a function called upper and a function called lower if I wanted to go all lowercase or all uppercase. I'm already in uppercase. So I'll try proper. Click go, and here's proper. And then I can either double click it or I can just click it once and click OK. And what I need to do is tell the function argument what text that I want to be changed. So I happen to want this text to be changed. Right now it equals this, but once the formula does its thing, it will look like this. There's Shane. I can do the same thing with the last name. Click on the symbol. Proper is already here. I can actually just double click on that and open this up. Click on the cell B5 for the last name, click OK. Now, can this be copied down? Yes, it can. So you can actually copy this down all the way through a column, which is very efficient. Great. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to concatenate. Actually, I'm going to do this for both of these. That way we have it so that it's... Uh, Looks a little bit complete. Okay. Then what I want to do is something called concatenating. Big, long word. I don't know where they came up with it. But the idea is what I want to do is I want this to be Shane Morgan. Spelled properly. So how do I do this? I'm going to use something called concatenate. So I'm going to come up here. Sorry, click on the cell, click here, and then I can just type in here to start text and see what happens. Now, the thing is, there happens to be an awful lot of um, formulas, functions that can be related to text, and most of this means nothing to me. Um, so what I want to do is use what I happen to know to be called concatenate. So I'm going to type concat, and I'm going to select concatenate. And what it's going to do is it's going to ask me for the contents to put in here. So text one, I can pick up from here and text it. And notice it reads Shane. Then text two, I can pick up from here. And then I can, and this is what the result will look like. Okay. Now what happens if I actually wanted the name to be Morgan, comma, Shane, like this? You actually could do that as well through concatenate. So what I'm going to do is, again, come up here, concatenate. But in this case, what I'm going to do is say, okay, text one will be Morgan. 
text two, I need to put a comma and a space. And if you're going to put something like that that's not a cell reference, you need to use quotation marks and put the information inside. So I'm going to use a comma and a space like this. Then the third cell here will be the first name. And then when I look at the preview, this is what I'll see. Morgan, comma, Shane. And that's how that works. Now, what happens if I actually want to take this apart? I'm going to have to uh, break this up. Now, what I'm going to do before I do this, I'm going to just copy. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to um, take it out of being a formula because there's a certain point when you're trying to do something. If you're working formulas from formulas, Excel could get a little confused depending on what you're trying to do. So if I don't need to keep the formula after copying it and pasting it down and saying, okay, that's good enough, then, wow, that looks interesting. Nini <laughs> Igwe. G Ishida. It's like interesting when you do something like this. It looks kind of awful. I'm going to come up here and then I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to come up to paste. And what I want to do is paste values, not formulas. Where's the values? Paste values there. No, that's regular. Or paste values is down here. It has a little one, two, three by it. What this does is it will keep the data and remove the formula. So now this is actually just in here like this. There's no formula I'm showing anymore. Now what I want to do is I want to split this apart. So I need to come up here. Let's take a look at formulas. Now let's look at data. Data is what I want because what I want to do is I want to break this up in text to columns. Split a single column of text into multiple columns. What this does is it kind of opens up a wizard. Well, it actually opens up. And right now there's no delimiter. There is no break between this name here. So let's see what happens when we do this. Okay, there happens to be nothing. Let's see what we get next. And then destination, we'll try this, see what happens. Oh, and see what it is. I did it over itself, but that didn't do any good. And I'm also not sure this is going to work the way I'd like it to. So I'm going to just split this apart so it makes a little bit more sense. Okay, go back to text to columns again, to limited, next. And I'm just going to say it's actually got a space. Take the tab out, take the other out. It's got a space. Come here. And what I actually need to do, so this is what it will look like when I'm done, is I have to change the destination. Right now, it's reading its own cell as the destination. So in here, instead, what I want is this. Finish. And then what it does is it takes and puts the first half of it into this column and the second half into this column. For some reason, it also seems to center it. So if you don't like that, you could then come over to home and you can make sure that you have, uh, you know, have it so that it's um, left aligned. Now, what happens if I want a partial? Meaning that I want to create a rep ID over here. And if I wanted to create, and I don't remember specifically what the book instructions are, so I will just make this one up as I go along. Maybe I want the rep ID to be the first three letters of the last name, a dash, and a number after it. So what I'm going to do is I want to put in here a partial of this name. And I want the partial to be on the left-hand side of the name rather than the right-hand side. Huh? Okay, why don't I just get started? I'm going to click my functions, and I'm going to type in left. That's what I meant by huh? <laughs> click go. And there's a left function. And what this does is it asks you to note where you want. Oops, wait a minute. I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? Take a look. I have the formula in the wrong column. I have it in the cell where the last name is instead of in the partial. It's easy to recover from a mistake like that by clicking cancel, going over to the correct cell, and then coming back up here. So it's okay to make mistakes because you'll just stumble. I do it all the time. As proficient as I am with Excel, I still stumble sometimes. Click left, 
and then we come back down here. And what I want is the text to come from here. And then I choose the number of characters I want from the left. And I'm going to choose three. And then I can see the little preview down here that it will return M-O-R for Morgan. And I'll click OK. Great. Now from here, I can concatenate this and a num number. So I'm going to come into this cell. I'm going to click into the, and, and by the way, the other way you can get to insert functions is simply to go to formulas and insert a function from here. So you can do it either way that you're comfortable with. And then what I want to do is concatenate again. And at this point, I want to concatenate this cell. And then what I want to do is a dash. So I need to do this. And then down here, I'm just going to put a number in. Except that that may or may not work. Okay, it works out just fine here. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. Now, this is not the kind of formula that I could easily. I'm going to go ahead and click these, copy them, and paste them down and see what we get. Okay, this we get the same thing because this, first off, this was actually splitting columns. It doesn't really work the way a formula does. So that didn't work here. But I'm going to come down here and I'm going to just uh, type in IGW, which is what the last name would be, IGW. Why? Because I want to see if I can make a formula from the rep ID. Okay, so I'm going to copy this, and now I get IGW1001. So this was successful, and it was not successful. What it means is it, it actually picked up this cell for the um, I6 relative location, but the number itself doesn't change. So we'd have to do something a little bit different in order to get the numbers to change. But um, that would actually most likely be adding a column and adding numbers and all of that, but, or whatever the steps are. I state in the book because I clearly have steps there. But this is just a quick um, show you how you could do a concatenate with um, a, a cell and then some extra data. And then you'll do that kind of step over here to create an email address. So anyway, I hope this gives you enough of a starting point on how you could do each of these kind of formulas to be helpful.